Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my latest video and as the video description tells you, I'm going to be doing a review of this Enigma, the best of Jeff Hardy. This is the first of the Jeff Hardy DVDs that TNA released and it was one of the very first TNA DVDs that I got. Um, I've watched it a few times and recently watched rewatched it after doing my up-to-date DVD collection, uh, the TNA one. Um, so I figured, what the hell, I'd do a uh, a quick review on it. Um, well, not so much a quick review, but, you know, a, a review. Um, so, yeah, basically what I'm going to do is go through the matches one by one. There will be results given in this, so, you know, obviously, spoiler alert. Um, so, yeah, I'll get on with it. So the first match on it is a X Division title match between AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is the surprise uh, opponent for uh, AJ. Kid Cash was originally scheduled to challenge Styles for the title, but he had a broken fibula, so that made it pretty much impossible for him to wrestle a full match. So TNA promised a mystery opponent, and lo and behold, Jeff makes his uh, appearance. Don West and Mike Tanae do a really good job of putting over how big of a coup it is for TNA to sign Hardy. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that at this point he had been released by TNA uh, by WWE, so they just you know dropped him. He went to Ring of Honor and just got booed out of Ring of Honor and just you know nobody wanted him there. So the next one in the big three at that time was TNA. Um, they were happy to sign him. So yeah, this was his, uh, his debut match. Um, it is uh, a pretty good match um, plenty of back and forth both guys in some pretty good moves but then uh, at the well we don't actually get a conclusion to it because Kid Cash and um, Dallas uh, run out and um, basically ruin the match and then AJ and Hardy end up cleaning house uh, with a steel chair and Hardy hits Dallas with um, a swanton. Next up is a Jeff Hardy contract signing, which to me seemed a bit strange that he'd already had one match, but then they were doing a contract signing. Uh, Dusty Rhodes comes out as apparently he's the one responsible for brokering the deal with TNA and Jeff Hardy. Uh, he comes out, gives a little bit of speech, uses his, um, you know, dined with King and Queens and slept in alleyways and pork and beans and all that malarkey, and then makes a in, you know, announcement that you know signing this guy wasn't about. Um, no, it brings Jeff Hardy out. Sorry, and then carries on making a speech about how it wasn't about um, having his own locker room and making sure that he had plenty of M and M's backstage and that all the green ones were taken out. Taken out. It was just you know all about doing what he loved and that was wrestling. So Hardy's got to go around the ring, put the turnbuckle, sort of asking the crowd should I sign. Anyway, um, it jumps back down and Dusty says there was one thing. Uh, that you know did bring Hardy here so Hardy signed the contract Dusty pulls out uh, another piece of paper from his well, folder from his back pocket lays it out and uh, basically says that um, you know this was the one thing that you know made Hardy come to TNA and it's a world title shot so Hardy signs that and then Monty Brown comes out he starts saying that he's next in line, not hard, you know, it's good that you're here for the fans, blah, 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 but I'm next for a title shot. Then out comes Jeff Jarrett wearing an absolutely ridiculous suit. It looks like, looks like he should be in an orchestra. Um, obviously, he has the guitar with him. Uh, he comes out saying that Dusty doesn't have any authority to hand out title shots, blah, blah, blah. Slaps Hardy. Hardy fights back. Manny Brown just stands back and watches it all unfold. Uh, Hardy hits a swanton on... Um, Jarrett and then as he gets up uh, Monty Brown hits him with a pounce and I always loved that move, the pounce, I just thought it was brilliant uh, Jarrett gets up and just absolutely lays out um, Jeff Hardy with the guitar so then we move on to match number 2 of the DVD which is Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles and Ron Killings versus Monty Brown, Kid Cash and Dallas um, Dallas is, of course, the original name of um, Lance Hoyt. For you know, those of you who will know, for those of you who don't know, Lance Hoyt used to be known as Dallas. So you know that the faces 
faces, use technical terms here. Uh, start off dominating Kid Cash and, and Dallas gets a taste as well as Monty. And then all three styles, Killings and Hardy do simultaneous dives to the outside and it looks really cool. It, it does look good. Dominate Cash for a little while longer until Monty Brown eventually gets tagged in and he takes over on Ron Killings. AJ makes a hot tag which goes until you know he gets leveled by uh, Dallas with a big boot. Eventually Hardy gets tagged in and he's just absolutely on fire. Um, then it breaks down into just a big brawl between all six guys. Uh, Dallas gets isolated. Um, excuse me. And Hardy ends up hitting a swanton for the three count. Uh, Jarrett comes out takes liberties with uh, Hardy who we will be facing two weeks from now. Uh, Monty, it's hard. Monty Brown it's Hardy with a pounce and stumps on him as Jeff Jarrett locks on the figure of four. Uh, match number three is the NWA World title, NWA World Heavyweight title match. Jeff Hardy versus Jeff Jarrett and this match has been subtitled, was subtitled um, The Date With Fate and it gets hyped up by Mike Tanay and Don West as the biggest match in TNA history. Uh, fight begins before Jeremy Borish can even make the ring announcement. Security is trying to separate them long enough to get the announcements done, but they just both keep attacking each other. Jarrett gets busted open before the bell even rings. Um, then it shows you Monty Brown looking on from the top of the entrance ramp. Uh, Mike Tanay brings up how Hardy wants pin Triple H to win the WWE Intercontinental title, which just seemed a bit weird to me that TNA would acknowledge WWE, but you know, I suppose they've got nothing to lose. Uh, then we also see that Abyss is watching, I think it's ringside from what I can remember. Um, they end up brawling up into the balcony of the uh, asylum and Hardy tries to throw uh, Jarrett over, but you know, he doesn't. Jarrett drills the referee Rudy Charles with a chair, which you know, knocks him out cold. A um, bit more back and forth, bit of a scrap. Hardy hits a swanton and the referee is amazingly back in the ring. It's just, you know, from being out cold, a little bit of a brawl, he's, he's back in the ring. Jarrett puts on the figure of four right in the middle of the ring. Uh, and then it cuts to Raven watching from high up. Um, I think, oh, what did they refer to it as Raven's Perch or something at one point? So, yeah, he's up there uh, watching. Uh, then Dusty Rhodes comes to ringside uh, to sort of, you know, cheer on Hardy and what have you. Jarrett tries to run away from the match. Dusty just grabs hold of him, throws him back into the ring. Hardy puts him in the spine line, which apparently he debuted the week, you know, at some point. Um, as his surprise submission move, which is basically, it's just a Boston Crab. Except you hold both legs under one arm. Uh, Jarek manages to get out of that, slides out of the ring, and then just proper pops Dusty Rhodes. Um, Dusty, you know, interferes, nails Jarrett, which brings out, and I hate saying his name, Vince Russo, who has his traditional baseball bat with him. Um, the bat ends up in the ring. Um, Russo's trying to get Dusty back to the dressing room. Nobody actually gets to use the bat um, before Russo takes it out. Hardy goes up for the swanton, but Jarrett moves out of the way. Uh, referee gets distracted by something, and then he just absolutely just waffles Hardy from behind, um, and that's enough to get the victory and retain the title. Uh, most of the match was pretty solid. The The finish was was lame. Um, you know, looking back, giving Jeff Hardy the title here would have really created some interest. Leading up to the Victory Road pay-per-view, it would have been amazing, but obviously there were reasons why TNA weren't willing to put the belt on uh, anybody else. Jarrett, <coughs> excuse me. So the first match is a number one contenders match between Jeff Hardy and Monty Brown. This is basically the culmination of a sort of four-man tournament. Um, Winner of the match gets a uh, sorry about that. Some, uh, DVD player in the background. Uh, yeah, winner of this match gets the title shot at Victory Road, uh, which is TNA's first three-hour pay-per-view on Sunday. 
um, Handy beat Abyss in the previous round. <coughs> Excuse me. Monty Brown beat Raven the week before uh, to qualify for this match. So early on, um, Monty Brown is really, really sort of using the power game. You know, he's, he's using that advantage. And then it shows you Abyss and Raven watching on. Uh, there's like a, a fade out for a commercial break and when they come back Hardy's just taken control of the match for like the first time ever Monty regains the advantage and locks on a sleeper um, Hardy counts with a jawbreaker hits a twist of fate but Brown kicks out at two referee gets knocked down uh, Hardy hits a swanton uh, but obviously there's no referee to count Abyss comes in gives Hardy a black hole slam and Monty responds by Pouncing Abyss. Then Raven comes in, nails Monty Brown with a chair, and then hits him with the Raven Effect DDT, um, which I always thought was called the Even Flow. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, this allows Addy to get the Twist of Fate and score the win. Uh, it's a pretty good match, and it, in my opinion, it set up Hardy as a solid contender and also set up the first Monsters Ball match at Victory Road. So the fifth match is um, another six-man tag. It's uh, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles and Ron Killings again. This time they're facing Team Canada, uh, Bobby Roode, Eric Young and Ruffy Silverstein. Um, from what I can gather, this is Ruffy Silverstein's only appearance as TNA. Uh, so that's as far as I know. And he made it onto DVD, so fair play. Uh, baby faces control the beginning of the match and they go to a commercial break but when we come back Team Canada is able to turn it around and obviously that's because of Ruffy Silverstein um, Hardy gets a hot tag and cleans house on all three members of Team Canada AJ and Truth take out Young and Rude uh, who at this point by the way are NWA Tag Team Champions leaving Hardy and Silverstein alone in the ring a twist of fate later and the good guys win the uh, rest of Team Canada comes out to attack him. So BG, James and Conan come out to even the odds. Scott DeMar is left in the ring with Hardy. So Hardy gives him a flatliner followed by a swanton off a ladder. Jarrett sneaks into the ring, nails Hardy with the guitar and then announces that Victory Road match will indeed be a ladder match because Hardy had already laid down the challenge apparently. Um, so after beating from behind, Jarrett accepts leads on to match number six the ladder match for the nwa world heavyweight title jeff hardy versus jeff jarrett at victory road um there's a video package included here it shows you like little bits of build up um and i, I like how tna did the tale of the tape and x factors before the title matches i'm not sure if they still do all, um but on the, these dvds it does show you them and I, I always thought that was a nice touch um at this point uh hall and nash have made their sort of TNA appearances and debuts sort of thing. Uh, Scott Hall is back in Jeff Jarrett and apparently Kevin Nash is in Hardy's cor I mean, corner. Um, straight from that ladder gets involved uh, by Hardy bringing it in. Brings in another, so there's two ladders in the ring. Uh, Hardy does a really neat spot um, where he sort of gets Jeff Jarrett in the middle of the ladder and he's stood above him and he's pulling the sides in so it's like crushing his ribs which I thought was pretty cool I think it's been done since but you know this is from like 2004 so we're going back 16 years wow um, so yeah um, neither Hall or Nash have made an appearance at this point yet so Andy somehow messes up and blows an STO and then misses the leapfrog leg drop off the ladder Rudy Charles takes a bump so he's out for a while Jarrett climbs the ladder, Hardy knocks him off and then Scott Hall comes out and uh, he, he looked rough um, he gives Hardy the, the edge as it's referred to here security come out, try and get Hall to leave um, he responds by just like not leaving at all, just hanging around ringside um, Hardy does the cap up with the ladder where he jumps and it smashes um, Jarrett in the face uh, tries to climb the ladder um, and then Jarrett climbs up as well but Hardy knocks him off but then Hall interferes again 
Uh, Rudy Charles can't really do it because it's, you know, obviously it's a ladder match. There's not really any rules other than grab the belt win or whatever and win. Uh, Jarrett climbs the ladder again, gets pushed off and crotched by Hardy. He climbs. Jarrett pushes him outside the ring where he lands on Scott Hall. Um, Hardy hits a twist of fate on Hall uh, and he has absolutely no idea how to take it at all. Uh, Swanton follows. Jarrett and Hardy go up to climb the ladder and Kevin Nash's music hits. He comes down with uh, two guitars over his shoulder and for some bizarre reason everyone assumes he's on Hardy's side. You know, it's just, you know, even watching this the first time I knew what were coming. Of course, you know, he gives a guitar to Hall and they use him to beat up Hardy and give Jarrett the win. And Tanae and John West obviously is announced as like, oh, we're shocked that Nash turned on Hardy. Really? Why? It's Kevin Nash. I'm surprised he didn't pull a ligament or damage himself somehow walking down to and climbing in carrying two heavy guitars. So next up is Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles versus The Naturals. Um, Styles and Hardy both coming off losses in the in title matches at Victory Road. So obviously, you know, they're out for redemption. They need to prove a point. They're in a foul mood, blah, 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 blah. And the Naturals just don't even look like they're in the same league as Styles and Hardy, even though they are former NWA Tag Team Champions. Um, AJ pretty much dominates both Chase Stevens and Andy Douglas. Styles and Hardy execute some really dangerous looking double team manoeuvres and get the win when um, AJ Styles hits the Styles Clash on Stevens. Uh, match 8 is another six man it's Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles and Randy Savage versus the Kings of Wrestling which is Kevin Nash, Scott Hall and Jeff Jarrett and this one's from Turning Point uh, before the match starts we get told that um, Savage has been kidnapped um, so it'll be two versus three Hall and Nash come out wearing Elvis style jumpsuits um, Jarrett comes out just wearing like his normal wrestling gear um, AJ and Jarrett start off you know, nice and steady um, National obviously still in this full jumpsuit, so then you know they don't take any of them off. Uh, but Jarrett's in his, like I said, in his usual gear. Um, all comes in, uh, Styles gets some offense in, and then AJ calls for um, Nash to come in. So he gets in, um, Hardy you know, manages to get some offense in. Um, the Outnumbered, you know, baby faces, the good guys are doing well for themselves. But then the heels take over um, due to the numbers game. Nash uses his size to his advantage. Uh, Jarrett goes for a figure of four, but AJ gets a couple of rolls up for two counts. Hardly, Hardy finally gets a tag in. Uh, hits a modified twist of fate on Jarrett, but Nash takes the referee out. That pulls him out of the ring and just decks him. AJ then hits Nash with uh, a big baseball slide. Hall nails Hardy with a guitar on the top rope. Um, but, you know, Hardy falls. And he almost sort of falls in the swanton um, position. Uh, like uh, motion, sorry, and lands on top of Jarrett. But obviously there's no referee. AJ hits a plancher on Hall outside the ring. Then all of a sudden, Randy Savage's music hits. He walks out, um, stands on the ring apron, makes a tag to uh it's aj i believe and he, he's got like a long sleeve shirt on and he's like bald and he, he he didn't look good didn't look good um anyway jared gets to sleep on savage but he reverses it and then Hardy puts one on hall and aj put jumps up on kevin nash's back puts a sleeper on him jared goes for a sunset flip savage just punches him and then just sort of lowers himself down hooks his leg in the, like the weakest ever roll up and gets the win um to me in this match aj did all the work savage comes out for less than a minute and gets to pin the world champion it just sent i don't know i mean and obviously it's it's savage you got to play to i suppose the ego the name the legend whatever you want to call it and i'm a i'm a savage fan don't get me wrong i, I love randy savage but it just seemed a bit like AJ had done all the hard work. Savage comes out, but I suppose it's, uh, it is what it is. Uh, match nine is Jeff Hardy versus Bobby Roode. 
Uh, Bob Roode is one half of the NWA Tag Team Champions at this point. Scott DeMar interferes straight away. Uh, Roode goes to work on uh, the neck of Hardy. Roode looks amazing. And you, it's obvious uh, to anybody who's watched wrestling that he was going to be a big star in TNA. Even at this point, you could see he was going to be one that would just go from there and just constantly rise, um, which obviously he did. And then he went to WWE. He was on amazing NXT and now he's well um so yeah and these two would eventually wrestle uh one-on-one on pay-per-view at unbreakable in september 2005 um anyway i digress um yeah a bit back and forth Hardy it's a swan song and gets the win uh match number 10 jeff Hardy versus scott hall with special referee rowdy Roddy piper Hall comes out again wearing the Elvis gear, but he has a proper Elvis. I think he has a plastic Elvis uh, hair piece on as well, um, which is, is just you know slightly comical. Don't sound it, but you know Piper goes to ex. I mean, it sort of checks Hardy, but he goes to extreme lengths on uh, checking Scott Hall. Finds a couple of things he don't like. He finds like some sort of spike thing, um, a fork. And then a chain round his neck. Uh, the bell rings, and then for some reason, Hall frisks Piper um, and finds a pair of handcuffs, which you know, which is baffling. But you know, um, Piper's count for Hall is is really slow, um, and then it's you know a lot faster for Hardy. Uh, there's a bit of back and forth. Hall throws Hardy into Piper, goes to a turnbuckle, takes out some brass knuckles that you know him. Must have hidden there at some point during the day. Uh, Piper tries to stop him. All goes to punch him, but Piper just pokes him in the eyes. Hardy finishes with a twist of fate, which Tanae has just abbreviated um, to just the twist. Um, and a swanton bomb uh, for the win. Hardy gets a microphone, says, I'm coming for Jarrett. And Piper declares, next world champion. Then in a big shocker, um, Abyss comes out and just dismantles Hardy. At the time, it was a big shocker because the, the popular belief and the rumour was that Abyss was on his way to WWE. So for him to appear in the area, the fans were like, holy shit, he's still here. Um, this leads on to match number 11. A false count anyway match between Jeff Hardy and Abyss at Destination. Destination. Apologise for that, X. Uh, this match was dubbed uh, The Final Assault. Um, they have a video package that makes Hardy look like he's, he's really motivated for this. Um, funnily enough, though, during his entrance, Hardy is booed by the fans, but I think it's it might be because Abyss has been such like a hardcore TNA guy. He's, he's been there from the beginning, so I don't know. There, there'll be reasons, but yeah, Hardy doesn't get booed by uh, the fans in the, uh, the Impact Zone. Um, uh, Match starts. Abyss takes out a cameraman as they're fighting backstage almost like right away. Hardy takes a, a bump that they show like loads of times on TV. Um, this is, yeah, yeah, takes a bump. He, uh, he sets Abyss upon a table. He has two tables lying next to each other. Sets Abyss upon one, climbs up to outside on the wall. I'm pretty sure it's this match. My memory is bad. I've, I've made notes, but. I, and. He jumps off and does a swanton, um, and he, he hits Abyss, and then his legs go through the second table, so both of them end up decked. I'm pretty sure it's that one that I'm thinking of. If I'm wrong, I apologise. Um, so, yeah, they end up brawling back to uh, the ring, do some brawling with a chair, and then Abyss brings out uh, a ladder. Um, Hardy delivers his signature leg drop. Abyss comes back and hits shock treatment. Hardy eventually gets a twist of fate onto a ladder uh, for a three count uh, after Abyss goes to try and slam Hardy onto it, a choke slam him onto it, something. Uh, Abyss is not happy, so he goes under the ring, comes out with his little bag of thumbtacks, lays them all up the floor, delivers a black hole slam onto Hardy for some reason, and probably for a better visual of me on this. Um, has taken his shirt off by this point, so obviously you can see all the drawing pins and everything, or tacks as Americans call, stuck in his back, which is pretty graphic. 
uh, match 12 is Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles versus Raven and Abyss and this is basically just to build up the Styles versus Abyss and Raven versus Hardy matches that are coming up on the lockdown pay-per-view uh, West at one point calls lockdown potentially the greatest show in the history of the world he loved building stuff up to Don West um, it's a pretty typical tag team match you know back and forth and everything Right, Raven knocks Hardy out, uh, which makes it difficult for AJ to get a, a tag to him, but eventually he does. Um, and then Hardy cleans house, and then it all just breaks down and all forming and brawling, and they all hit the big moves. Abyss and Raven bring a steel chain into the mix, and as Abyss goes to hit, Hardy, AJ pushes Jeff out of the way and takes the impact for himself. Takes the bullet, so to speak. And that ends the match uh, as, you know, in a disqualification. Tine mentions it about that it's a double DQ, but the uh, Abyss blatantly hit, went to hit him with a chain and made contact with Styles, so obviously they are the ones that have been disqualified. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, it was a really, really good match. Um, and it did set up, well, I wouldn't say a really good match, but it was a damn good match. Uh, it set up both matches for the pay-per-view really well. Um, Abyss then whips AJ with the chain while AJ stood in the buckles. And Raven just throws Hardy outside the ring uh, and he just goes straight through a table. And then Abyss pretty much hangs AJ uh, with the chain around his neck, which is pretty graphic to watch. But if you've seen the big boss man hanging from... SummerSlam 99 he's probably going to get shot by wrestling historians now but yeah the SummerSlam where boss man got hung by the brood um, it is still pretty disturbing to watch anyway match number 13 is the tables match Jeff Hardy versus Raven at lockdown um, again there's another short video package to start off with um, right from the off Hardy goes after Raven with a chair Raven comes back, then Hardy comes back, and it's just mostly back and forth for the first few minutes. Raven, first one to bleed. Hardy sets Raven up on a table and goes for a swanton, but Raven moves out of the way. Hardy goes crashing through the table, but that doesn't give Raven the win. Raven sets up a double stack with four tables, and they climb towards the top of the cage. Hardy knocks Raven onto the tables, and then hits a leg drop off the top of the cage, to win the match because as Mike Tanay says if you go crashing through a table yourself um, it don't count as a win you have to put your opponent through the actual table itself so it's like right okay fair enough so yeah um, Hardy gets the win and I thought it was a really good tables match I, I thoroughly enjoyed it um, and that is the the end of the, the matches on the uh, the DVD there is a bonus one which is uh, behind the scenes of making Modest, the music video, which is obviously Jeff Hardy's theme at this point, sung by him. So, yeah, that is um, pretty much, you know, Enigma, the best of Jeff Hardy. Uh, it's a pretty solid DVD, uh, if you can find a copy and you're a Jeff Hardy fan but haven't seen any of his TNA stuff, grab them if you can get them. Um, I have hopefully got... Oh, well, I will have the second one coming soon. The third one, I cannot find at all for love and money. I'm really struggling to find the third Jeff Hardy DVD. But um, when the second one comes, I um, will watch that and no doubt do a review. Um, keep your eyes peeled. I am going to be doing some reviews of my old school TNA DVDs because, like I said, after doing that video of my collection, um, I watched this and I watched a couple of others. So, like I say, keep your eyes out. Um, for those um, that'll do it for now guys um, hope you enjoyed this video um, please give it a thumbs up um, thank you to those who have subscribed um, if this is one of my first videos you've seen um, welcome to the channel and look back through there's all sorts of stuff on this channel uh, a lot of it is wrestling related stuff but there are also movie reviews and just bits of random stuff merchandise belt unboxings all that kind of thing um, so yeah there's usually something on here for everybody um so yeah that'll do it for this video guys um look after yourselves be careful 
take care and i will be back the new uh, new video um soon so as always like i said take care bye for now